After contracting COVID-19 at a concert in Florida, 24-year-old Blake Bargatze found himself in the hospital and unable to breathe. The nurses said I was pretty much drained of all color. And I just remember him saying, you know, we're gonna have to intubate, you're gonna go to sleep for a little bit. As his condition worsened, Blake was placed on a ventilator and transported to a hospital near his home in Georgia. There, the family was told that Blake's lungs would never recover from the damage inflicted by COVID. His only hope was a double lung transplant. But no nearby transplant centers would take his case. They were either too overwhelmed by COVID or unwilling to operate on someone whose condition was so frail. But Blake's mom, Cheryl, refused to give up. And when she contacted the University of Maryland, the answer was an unequivocal and enthusiastic yes. We typically do the sickest of the sick. Um, and we have tended to be a, a center that takes patients who have been turned down at multiple other sites. Chair of the Department of Surgery at the University of Maryland School of Medicine, Dr. Christine Law is a renowned lung transplant surgeon dedicated to improving patient outcomes through research and clinical innovation. The things that we see clinically and we see as problems, we can then think about those and take them into the lab and tweak them and then bring them back into the bedside. A dream team of surgeons, pulmonologists, and other top specialists was assembled to care for Blake. They're part of the University of Maryland's comprehensive program in transplantation with School of Medicine clinicians and scientists from multiple academic departments. We do about, in general, across all the organs, about 380 transplants a year. Um, big majority are kidneys and livers, but we do a significant number of hearts and lungs, pancreas. Um, and the follow-up, we are following close to probably 5,000 patients. All right, Blake. Perfect. Blake was in good hands, but his survival was not assured. He was being kept alive by a ventilator and ECMO, a heart-lung machine that oxygenates the blood. As he waited for suitable donor lungs, his heart stopped more than once. Three times, twice on Mother's Day with me. There is nothing worse than a mother having to walk out of the room so they can bring the crash cart in and do compressions on your child. It was horrible. A temporary pacemaker stabilized Blake's heart as physical therapists worked to strengthen Blake for his transplant. A hospital chaplain stopped by every night. I just kept praying, kind of put it up in God's hands at that point. I just knew I didn't want to die. Blake's own lungs were damaged beyond repair by his body's immune response to the COVID virus. Dr. Robert Reed is Blake's pulmonologist. And this is a relatively normal scan, as I mentioned. You can see that the lung goes all the way from there to there. Here's Mr. Bargatze, and in him, these were small scarred lungs that were only this big. These were very damaged lungs, irreparable medically, uh, with no chance of recovery without a lung transplant. Hi, Mom. Hi, baby. I love you. I just want you to let, let you know that I love you, and I appreciate you coming in and seeing me every single day after work. As long as there was hope, Blake's mom knew her son would never give up. He's always been a fighter, and when he's determined, he doesn't stop. And what's funny is his first question to me was, can I keep my job? And his boss said, absolutely. And then he said, okay, I want it. The University of Maryland School of Medicine is a national leader in transplant research, pioneering new surgical techniques and therapies to extend life for transplant patients. A prime example is the first ever transplant of a genetically modified pig heart into a human which extended the life of a Maryland man by two months. In Dr. Law's laboratory, a major research goal is the reduction of ischemia reperfusion injury. That's the damage that occurs to the donated organ during transplantation. But when you take an organ out of a donor and you cool it and put it and bring it over to the recipient, that's called the ischemic injury. Once we put the organ in, is as soon as we take off what we call a cross clamp to allow the organ to be reperfused with blood, that also causes an injury. That's called reperfusion injury. There's multiple ways of decreasing that, but we have found that if we can decrease ischemia reperfusion injury, that early injury, we see less rejection down the road in these organs. New devices are already being used to keep transplanted organs perfused and more healthy prior to transplantation. Dr. Jonathan Bromberg is also looking for ways to reduce rejection 
by controlling the body's immune response. He's studying how white blood cells move through the body. And there's lots of signals that control how they travel. And every single one of those signals determines whether you have a positive immune response, which would be rejection of an organ, or a negative immune response, which would be tolerance uh, to an organ and preventing inflammation. Meanwhile, surgeon scientist Dr. Alexander Krupnik wants to understand why the body tries to reject a transplanted lung, but won't reject a cancer. And that's what makes the lung transplant so acutely immunogenic, is it uses different pathways to be recognized. So the standard traditional immunosuppression, which is similar between kidneys, livers, and lungs, doesn't really work as well for the lung. And that's one of our focus, is to make lung-specific immunosuppression, as well as lung-specific therapy for lung cancer. Dr. Krupnik has already developed a novel drug to fight lung cancer, and hopes to develop new drugs to prevent organ rejection. It's the kind of research that can only be done with philanthropic support. The early, very risky research, we rely 100% on philanthropy. And without that, a lot of drugs just simply would not be out there. It's hard, it takes a lot of practice. The transplant program's mission also includes the teaching and training of residents, fellows, and medical students. Are you doing great? Thank doing you. great. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> First-year medical student, Shani Kamberi, is already planning to specialize in transplant surgery. I became interested in transplant science because I wanted to be able to directly change the patient experience. And by that, I mean graft survival, um, better patient outcomes, and even just a longer lifespan for these patients who come in. Today, Kamberi is learning techniques that make transplant surgery less invasive. To be able to come in as a first-year, and perform with my hands and see these skills that are so important for later use made me realize that I can actually do this. Blake's prayers were finally answered. His transplant was performed by a University of Maryland team led by Dr. Krupnik. Blake Bargatze had two new lungs and one very grateful mom. They saved my son's life. They gave him a chance when other places wouldn't. We just followed the path and people were placed in it that didn't know me, didn't know my son, and they were willing to help and do whatever it took. One, two, three. Weeks of rehabilitation followed at the University of Maryland Rehabilitation and Orthopedic Institute. Very good, honey. With the help of physical therapists, Blake rebuilt the strength to stand and walk. He had a new lease on life. The day after my surgery, I couldn't even lift my hands off the bed, let alone stand all by myself. Literally a week ago, it'd take two people just to get me up on my feet. And you know, granted, I still have to use a walker to get around, but I'll be up and dancing again sometime soon. For the rest of his life, Blake will take a daily regimen of immunosuppressant drugs to prevent the rejection of his new lungs. Throughout his long illness and recovery, Blake drew strength from his faith and from an artistic gift from a special friend. This is an original design by my best friend, Megan. She had drawn it, I believe, right after I got in the transplant and had it delivered up here from Georgia. So probably hold on to it for the rest of my life. And we loved it so much that we decided to put um, this main design on a bunch of hoodies as well as some Yeti cups to give out to the staff of the University of Maryland. All right, he feels good, looks good. He's good. completely on track medically. On the first anniversary of his transplant, Blake was cleared to go back home to Georgia. He's back to work now and feeling grateful for the transplant dream team that saved his life. I just want to thank everyone that was working within the University of Maryland for taking care of me, taking the risk and getting me back to the state of where I'm at now so I can continue to live my life. It's a gift that Blake and his family appreciate every single day. I don't think thank you's enough. We'll always be grateful and we're very blessed.